ahead and bless the name of the Lord. Go ahead, bless his holy name, give him praise, give him glory. Liba Rakote Shambali Gebrakata Sombala Dahaya. Father, we bless your holy name. Father, we bless your holy name. There is no God like our God. He's the biggest of the biggest. He's the greatest of the greatest. Shale Gebrakato Suske Bregadiata. Hebano Christe Brento Brente Carus. He Paliki Patola Kamante Lebada. He Sole Gebresuska. He Stokema Bratekune Satata. Epaleta, Epaleta, Epaleta. Father, we bless your holy name. We lift up our voice in thanksgiving. There's no God like our God. There's no King like our King. There's no one like our one. Faithful God, Holy God, Merciful God. We bless your holy name. Shabbatone Mataya. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, somebody say grace. Oh, I, I can't hear you. You need to make it louder. Somebody say grace. Somebody say grace. Somebody say grace. Say this is my story. We're going to pray from the book of Job chapter 29. We're going to pray from two scriptures. Job chapter 29. Oh glory to God. Verse 1. Job chapter 29. In verse 1. Oh thank you Jesus. The Bible says in verse 21, in, in 29 verse 1. Moreover, Job continued his Bible and said, All that, oh wow. This Job was reflecting on how he was before everything turned around. He said, All that I went in the month past before I was attacked. How was he? He says, In the days when God preserved me. That's the prayer of thanksgiving. <laughs> Father, thank you for preserving me. Thank you for preserving my children. Thank you for preserving my grandchildren. Thank you for preserving my career. Thank you for preserving my marriage. Thank you for preserving my job. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Let's go ahead and pray. Bongo bongo poro jolo para kara para tuketaya. Shike poro kombre ketele bonde kaprata ha. Shale ke bonde kaprata ke suske bragada. E brande kere poro mene ketolo rahita. Father, thank you for preserving me. Shapane kore talishne. Shampale ke rebotom rekapa. Le proto lo robotom rekapa ha satia. Son prete ne breketea. E pino shapane kuske bregedi. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Can I declare over you? It will not get worse. It will only get better. Whatever the Lord has started in your life, it will become a full testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says, faithful is it has begun it. He will also finish it. What he has begun in your spiritual life. What he has begun in your career. What he has begun in your finance. I said the Lord will finish it. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Just one more scripture. The next, the next verse. That scripture, the next verse. Let's read together. And when his candle shined upon my head, listen to what it says. It says his candle shined upon my head. I want to ask you someone. I want to ask you a question. Have you seen someone that has a skin neck cut before? And they sit down in light. What happened? You see the reflection of the light. You don't even see the head. Camera, let me catch someone with a skin neck cut. Catch someone with a skin neck cut. Someone that has a very good skin neck cut. Catch someone with a skin neck cut. You will see the camera. You will see the you don't see the head, you see the light shining on the head. My God, what does this mean? This is what this means. What this means is this. This is very powerful. Oh, glory to God. He says, His light shine upon my head. This is what it means. Instead of them to see me, they see the hand of my God. Glory to God. Instead of them to see me, they see the hand of my God. Look at the next line. It says this, Where by his light, I walk through darkness. There are many people that have marital troubles. It's not me because by his light, I walk through darkness. Some people have career issues. It's not me. I walk through darkness. How do I do it? By what? By 
his light oh glory to god you are going to declare this this vessel by yourself you are going to declare this vessel by yourself and this is a declaration that the light of god shines upon my head in everything i do the light of god shines upon my head i do not stumble the light of god shines upon my head go ahead and pray everybody the, the light of god shines upon my head the light of God shines upon my head. The light of God shines upon my head. Declare, declare, declare. The light of God shines upon my head. In Jesus' name we pray. And Father, I can't wait to thank you. You are the Lord that showers us with blessings and grace. You are, the Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, He says you are not just merciful, but you are rich in mercy. Some people are rich in money, but you are rich in mercy. For we are the people you have helped and showed mercy. We've come to say thank you. As individuals, as a family, we've come to say thank you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. This morning, grant everyone a God encounter. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Before you have your seat, can we shout everywhere? Everyone standing, let's shout a big heart. Hey! 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You may please have your seat. Glory to God. Just, um, just by the way of announcement, I, I don't know if you remember that July the 1st, what's happening? Yeah, I, some people are trying to get seating. You know, quiet, you need to help us scoop around. We have more than enough. Our, our, our gallery is still drying up. We have more work to do on the gallery. You know, this is second week, you know, moving back. You know, so people, you know, other people sitting at the stand on the back. I don't know if they are standing because they need a seat or something, but I just see a lot of people standing on the back. You know, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Choir, you need to help us, you know, just cope a little so that some of the people that come can share the seat with you. We still have some time before the fourth service. All right. Um, how are you doing today? Are, are you well? Come and give me a hug. I know you play basketball and you love to show us how tall you are. You know, yeah. What's your best move in basketball? So many moves. So show me one of it. Don't come too close. I, I will look too short. Yeah. Yeah, yeah just, just show us. <laughs> Praise God. It's nice. And congratulations on your testimony. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, um, so many testimonies. But before we share the testimonies, July the 1st, we are at um, London for Next Level Prayer Conference in the UK. Yeah, Next Level Prayer Conference in the UK, in Wembley. Um, what we are asking you to do today is this. All of you that have family and friends in, in the UK or in Europe, you can get a card and invite them because they may not know and they may not just be, you may just want to remind them. So what we're asking, if you want to do that, and I'm sending everybody that does that my first copy of my ebook. If you want to do that, just raise up your hands. The ushers will give to come to you, give you this card. Um, I think I have a copy. I don't. They'll give you a card. Yeah, thank you, my brother. That's really generous of you. You know, so you can do it, but if you register to do that, then I send you the copy of the ebook. So raise up your hands. Ushers, I need your help quickly to be able to give all of our friends and, and family here those cards to invite all of their friends for next level prayer conference. In Europe okay yeah thank you thank you thank you yeah if you're raising up your hands there's a brother over here there's a lady over here Th thank you so yes go ahead and invite them yeah praise the Lord yeah you did you did you get a card you've not gotten yeah go ahead yes go ahead I want to fill the card put even if you can put their own names you know is that the reason why he's doing you want to fix something please come so why that
the UK. So quickly get the card. So don't just say I will tell them. I want to get the ebook also. So get the card and send it to them and, you know, yeah, get them to come. Praise the Lord. And anybody that wants the card, you've not gotten the card right now. Sister IT, how are you doing today? Sister IT, come. I've not seen, I'm not giving you a hug in a long time. Come, you know. Yeah, look, a lady wants a card over there. Just raise up your hands, get the card. Fill it before the end of the service. We have great, great news. Great, great. Please pray for us. We will be fasting and praying all through June for the UK conference because we're believing God for 3,000 miracles. Yes, she said, you know, we believe for 3,000 miracles, you know. And your cousin from the, from the, Texas is enjoying the Texas team. How are you starting? Mm -mm. Say something. Praise God. Yeah. I'm happy to be in church. Yeah, happy to be in and church. I'm blessed to know you, Pastor. Oh, wow. Thank you. And how does your cousin feel in Texas? Oh, she's fine. She told me that that was one of the great things that happened to her 2023. Now she says she's heading the kids' zone. The kids' zone in Texas. And my daughter is there too. Oh, wow. Your daughter is there. Okay, I thought she yes. was in Canada. She's moved to Texas. She's moved to Texas. Oh, wow. She's okay. enjoying the church. She told me, Mommy, thank you for introducing me to Harvester. Oh, wow. Praise God. And she used Praise. to be a teenager pastor in Christ Embassy. Yeah. But I told her to come to Harvester. She's oh, happy. wow. She said they are great people to fellowship with. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Pastor. Awesome. Awesome. Praise the Lord. That's really good. That's really good. That's really good. Amen. So, um, that's one. I also want to go to say that next level prayer this morning will be very sim impactful. I want to join from tomorrow, 6.30 a.m. Let's invite our friends. All of you that have friends and family in uh, scales, what are you doing your baby dedication? Is that your wife beside you? Okay. What are you doing your baby dedication? June, not this month again, because I was expecting to in the fourth service. Okay, praise the Lord. Because we have to dedicate the gift to God, not on social media. Praise God. Yeah, this generation, you give birth to social media. You don't dedicate the baby to God. We need to, you know, put, let them see what I'm talking to. Timmy, let them see what I'm talking to. So they can be asking him that when are you dedicating your baby? Yeah. And some people that think he's single will know that he's happy with it. He's married with a child. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, smart for the camera skills. That's good. Praise the Lord. And it's because I've been attending church for over 10 years, actually. I think one was a young child, you know, so it's not new. Um, in the second service, we had a testimony from Osaz. Uh, ben, do you have the picture? In the second service, we had a testimony from Osaz, just one of the many, but she was in the second service. Ben, do you have the picture? Yeah. Osaz won the best actress in drama, uh, you know, yeah. In the movie, Man of God, which was a good one. And of course, um, um, on Sunday, we had the huge um, celebration of one of our sisters, Hilda, and our cooking. And Hilda is somewhere. Where's Hilda? Hilda, come and say something. But before Hilda comes, I want Hilda's mom to come because a good person comes from a good place. Can mommy come? Yes, mommy, come and say, come and share your big testimony. Hilda and Hilda's mom come. Please help them up the staircase quickly. I want them to say something first. The reason why is that when you see a good child, they didn't drop down from the sky. It's the glory of God. Mommy, say something. Say, yes. I know she, she next time I'm going to say anything. Even if it's praise the Lord, I'm okay. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I'm happy to stand here today. We are standing here today celebrated because God made it possible. And we are not ungrateful. We have come to say thank you. Praise God. You know, Hilda, you have a lot of fans in church because <laughs> I don't know if you saw my, you have a lot of fans because as soon as um, I got into facility, it was almost as if we had a service in the facility because, you know, everybody touching everybody and, you know, but you can support anybody and some people don't even pray and you can still support them. I remember when I got into that cubicle, you didn't look as nice as this. <laughs> you look tired, exhausted, worn out. And I said, Hilda, how are you? He said, fine, pastor. He said, when I came to church, I prayed for this. And God made it happen. And that's, that opened my heart to you in several ways. 
I wanted to say something. And the reason why, it's one thing to have a dream. It's one thing to be able to pray. There's hard work that you did. We're not disputing that. But to be able to say, thank you, Jesus. You want to say something? Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor. And I feel like, I think I've said this in quite a number of interviews, that being able to get to that 100-hour mark was a miracle. And I don't say this lightly because, in truth, six hours in, my body had failed me. And at that point, I knew that the only person that could make it happen was God. And I honestly feel like if anybody knows my story up until this point, you would understand that God is good. And God is not asleep. And I say to everybody out there that you just need to pray and you just need to believe because God has put something in your hand and you just need to allow his grace to shine on you. And one of the biggest things I pray for is that the grace of God will always be sufficient for me. Because honestly, Pastor had preached about grace and he had said there are different kinds of grace. You know, there's grace for money and there's grace for favor. But what you need is to have all-round grace. That's right. And when I prayed about this attempt, I prayed for all-round grace. Because in truth, you know, a lot of people have talked about being able to afford PR, but there is no amount of money that can get the love. The news could have gone out there and nobody would still care. But some way, somehow, it's the grace and the mercy of God that puts it in your heart for you to see it and resonate with it and connect to it and come there. And it was such a beautiful sight because we were under the rain praying. We were under the rain worshipping. Even when we didn't have enough food, there were people there still cheering and chanting. And when I look at it, when I close my eyes and I pray and I thank God, I remember that scene. And I just look at it as angels giving glory to God. Praise God. God. This is something to be you know, grateful for. And I would never, never take God's glory for granted. Praise God. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. And there'll be more wins. Yes, more there'll be more wins. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and appreciate Hilda. Please help her as she goes down. You know, as he shared that the scripture came to my mind, Acts chapter 16, verse 14. I want to read the scripture to you and I'll say something. The Bible says, a certain woman named Lydia, seller of purple, and the city of Titaria, which worshipped God. Head us. I want you to read it with me. Acts chapter 16, verse 14. Yeah, head us. Read the next line, please. Who's what? It says, who's had the Lord open? We prayed with this in NLP. You know, one of the things you have to join NLP for is the scriptures. Even once, just the scriptures. He says, the Bible says, who's had the Lord open? That means some heart can be locked. He yes. says, so Paul says, a heart the Lord opened. And, you know, some of my friends are even on Nigerians. We're talking about how did all of Nigeria get up behind one thing? And when she said that it's not even PR, I understood. It just goes back to the scripture. When God opens your heart and opens people's heart towards you, no one can refuse you. And you know why? Here the story is very instructive. If you have a dream and you don't know how it will happen, believe the Lord. Believe the Lord. Just, just look at her and say, Lord, I know someone you did it for. You will do it for me. Amen. Someone say hallelujah. Grace. 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 This is our story. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 30. We're going to continue our series on overcoming depression. Chantel, it's nice to see you. Where's Antonia? She's not in church today. Antonia. Oh, Antonia, right in front of me. Okay. Okay, maybe I should just use. Okay, I'll just stick with this one. But I need sound on the monitors. All right. So, first Samuel chapter 30, we're going to start reading from verse 3. First Samuel chapter 13, verse 3. We said this series beginning of this month on overcoming depression. And someone says, Why is it important for you to teach this? And, you know, as we grow, is this a lady last week that we blessed? Has a lot of things changed? 
I heard that a lot of people just open their heart towards you when you get the story. Is that true? Please come. I, I didn't realize. Come. Yeah, come. 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 Oh, she went last week. Who remembers? So, you were the one that said that you felt like dying, you know, your kids, since you lost the job as a school teacher, as a principal. Yeah. So, what happened between last week and now? I don't know. Uh, the first thing I did when I got home, I have one very negative person around me. I have to sit her down and tell her, see, I don't want all negative. Hey! You know, I just wish I knew she was going to come. I would have asked them to show you a small clip of last week because she spoke in the fourth service. She said she would tire, she would be in the house for three days or seven days and not go out at all. She had not seen her children. She was tired of life. Someone just said, before you kill yourself, just come to church. You know, and all of that. Yes. That's so powerful. So, I told her, I don't want negativity again. As you are seeing me, I just want positive things. So, if you want to be negative, don't come to my house again. Don't talk to me. So she was like, what happened? I said, nothing. It is well and it's joy. Praise so, God. Second thing, something has been putting me down. Two weeks ago, I told God that, God, you see this house friend that is fire that they are looking me for. They're looking for me. I'm not going to look for anyone. I'm not going to beg. I'm tired of begging. So if they are going to lock up this house, just lock up this door, carry my bag, and I make a plan. If it's caught on you, or oh, Ghana, I will go. I can sleep on the street here, nobody knows me. But here I can't. So that was my plan. But that was the first thing I did. When the money got to my pay, you asked me. Yeah, because what we did was that after we prayed and ministered to her, we gave her some money. And some other people also gave you some money. Yes, over, over a million. Yes, sir. Over a million. Tell me how you, you saw your children. I'm just coming back. My dad is there. I'm, I'm coming back from mainland. I left very early to attend church. So you, you with your children? Weekend, yes, sir. Oh, wow. How do you feel? I was, uh, my children were very happy. Immediately, I spoke to my son on the phone that was coming. He said, Mommy, your voice is different. What wow. happened? Praise God. I said, I'm just happy. Yeah, just happy. So, there's no need to think of death. Life is not over. With what you have now, build and build a great future. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay, so we're, we're going, we're, we're just going in now. So, we began to talk about, we began to talk about depression. And the, one of the major things I was talking about is how depression changes people. I have someone that I know, and when we were younger, he used to be very intelligent, very smart, very ambitious, very, very smart. But a series of things happened. Number one, he lost the job. Number two, he lost someone significant. And gradually, he just became a drunkard. And right now, what, you know, his wife is complaining. You know, I, I've been called into several meetings to help them settle. And this is someone I've known. When I talk to him about the future, there's no plan for the future again. He doesn't have a plan for the future. And for me, it shows you how depression can literally change and destroy a man. This was someone, you know, I don't know about you, but when you were younger, there are people you could point into your life. Let me address the heat quickly. You know, because we're still fixing here, you know, that's why it's so hot. Once the ACs upstairs are done, we'll have a better cooling system and it will all work out well. So don't think that this is what is perpetual because we're working in transition. We thought it was a better idea to move back here than to be spending eight million naira uh, in the rented venue we were. It was eight million naira per service. We thought that we could do that and put a lot more here. What do you think? Yeah. It's a great decision. Yeah. Exactly. Praise the Lord. And we're also working. If you notice, some part of the parking have improved. We're going to improve. We're going to get more car parks and just keep improving the parking experience. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah it, it's um, it's a blessing of the Lord. Um, we're growing faster than what we accommodate. You know, we moved to Coliseum, and between we moved to Coliseum in March. Between March and now, our church grew by thirty-five percent. Yeah, the numbers moved by thirty-five percent. You know, literally, literally by thirty-five percent. You know, just between March and now. 
So we are expanding in all the numbers. And you must understand that last week we said two churches. Um, we started a church in Ikorodu, started with 1,100 people. A church in, a church in uh, Yaba, 1,200 people. First service. First service. First service. You know, praise the Lord. All right. So I, I'm just, I'm just um, you know, so if you need to get him on chairs, let's do that so that we can make sure everybody's seated. A lot of you that are lapping your, chair, your bags, please give us those seats so that human beings can sit down. All right. So I began to say to you quickly, I began to say to you quickly about, you know, it broke my heart because I know this person. I'm like, how did you become like this? And he said, life is not fair to me. He said, look at me. He said, my, ma he said, my wife left because I didn't have money. He, he said to me, he said that I didn't have money. We don't have a child. He said, my wife left. He said, the second thing that happened is that I used to do so. I used to have a car. I don't have a car again. And the person began to count this. And this is the work of depression. Let me tell you something. If you allow depression, depression will destroy the future. And that's what I'm saying. And I've seen people, born again people, I've seen pastors that become depressed. They become so depressed that they leave the ministry. I've seen people, what caused that depression was the financial, I've seen people, you know, I, I spoke to someone and said, since I lost the 20 million, I've not been able to get over it myself. So depression can be caused. And when people are depressed, they, be, they keep blaming themselves. They keep blaming other people. Sometimes they blame God. But the key in the service is this. If I'm depressed, and if you're not depressed, I'm grateful to God that you're not depressed. But question is that if you know someone that is depressed and you want to help them, what can you say to them? Someone says, you know, and if you want to wonder, how do I know if I'm depressed or not? You need to go back to the other teachings on YouTube. They are all there. And some of you, you're not even depressed about yourself. It's about your child. There are mothers here. There are fathers here. You're concerned about your child, your grandchild. And you're wondering, when will my child have a child? When will my child get married? My child's marriage is struggling. You're just wondering. So, 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 3. The Bible says this. 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 3. How to overcome depression. 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse 3. Glory to God. The Bible says this. And David and his men came back to the city. They had tried to do some invasion. It didn't work. They came back. And behold, when they came back to their house, the Bible says their city was burnt with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. There's nothing as bad as this. Just imagine as you, you know, God forbid, but you go back home today and your house is burnt. But, I mean, if your house is burnt, you'll be like, oh, I mean, it's what is lost is houses. But when you think about it, his children and his wife were taken as captive. Your mind will be going gaga. Be like, my God, would they rape my wife? Would they rape my young girls? Would they turn? Your mind will be going crazy. So, when the Bible says that he was upset, he was down, he was distressed, he had a right to become that way. Because it was tough. And some of you are here. You know, you, you, you know, you know the thing about you know the thing about church is that sometimes pastors preach as if they don't live in this world. And they'll say, just forget all your problems. And it's difficult to forget your problems. Some of you are here by now, you thought you'll be married and you're not married. And even though you want to behave as it doesn't matter, it breaks your heart every time. Some of you are here, you're struggling with your, you're struggling with your finances. You're in big debt. Some of you are here, you run businesses and you thought that by now we would have been able to scale to do 5 billion per year. And yet you have never let 550 million there. And you look at where other people have gone. And sometimes the pain about depression is that you begin to blame yourself. And you'll be like, you know, what did I do wrong to God? What is wrong with me? Because, because why is life like this? And if you're in that place, you are not in that place alone. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. We read this last week. We're going to read it again. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. I want to read the message translation. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. So maybe you're trying to get pregnant and the pregnancy has not come. What are you doing in the interim? First Corinthians, give me the message translation. Chapter 10, not chapter 1. First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13. Glory to God. Can we read together one to go? No test or temptation that comes your way is beyond your cause of what others have to fail. Hold on here. When Satan wants to destroy you, he makes you feel you're the only one that is going through this challenge. You begin to say things like, why me? It's not you, it's everybody. 
You lost money in business. Everyone lost money in business. Let, let me, let me, <laughs> let me even help you, right? Who here has lost money in business before? Yes or no? You ends up. If lost money in business, just raise up your hands. Raise up your hands. Someone say, Pastor, you don't understand. It was money I borrowed. Put down your hands. Who here has lost money you borrowed before? Raise up your hands. Look at everybody has lost money they borrowed. You know, someone said, Pastor, you can't imagine. We, he told me he will love me, he will marry me. He just broke up with me. If you have been through a breakup, raise up your hands. Let me see. Everybody has eaten breakfast. Praise God. <laughs> hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. This is very powerful. This is very powerful. So, I'm saying this to you. I'm saying this to you because I really wanted to understand that there's nothing you've been through. It says all you need to remember, and you need to remember this. Every time, every time you're going through a tough time, remember, all you need to remember, that God will never allow you, will never let you down. He will never let you be pushed beyond your limit. That means everything, oh my God, this is what it means. When you have a challenge, God measures the challenge and says, this is 10 kg. She can handle it. Give it to her. And when the devil says, I want to give her 20 kg, you say, no, she can't handle 20 kg. In fact, your challenge shows your capacity. Your challenge shows your capacity. Glory to God. So the Bible says, let's go back to 1 Samuel now. 1 Samuel chapter 30. That was just a diversion. So the Bible says that David, verse 4, and David and the people that were with him lifted up their voices and they wept until they had no more power to weep. If you think you can cry, but you don't realize that crying have dimensions, then you don't know what crying is. When you start crying, it will just be flowing. They are used to crying. Then when you start crying, it will start having sound. It's called sobbing as you're crying. Then the sound moves to yelling when the crying is painful. But that's not the end of cry. There's another cry when there's no more tears. Ah. 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 I'm only saying that if you have not cried this cry, be grateful. Because some of us have been through it. When you are crying but tears cannot come out again. The Bible says here, this is what happened to David. That he was crying and tears could not come out again. The Bible says this, and David's two wives. The Bible says this, and David's two wives were taken. Ahinoam and the Jezreelite, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Camelite. The Bible says in verse 5, and David was greatly distressed. David was in a place of depression. Some people are depressed here over your marriage. Some people are depressed here over your goals. Some people are depressed here over a breakup. Some people are depressed over a financial transaction. Some people are depressed over a delay. The Bible says, and David was greatly distressed. And you need to know if you're distressed, you're not alone. The Bible says this. Because, and this will amplify it. For the people spoke of stoning him. Because the soul of the people were scraped. Every man for his sons and his daughter. But this is where you start. If, if you want to come out of depression... One of the things the pressure will do to you is that the pressure will make you feel as if you are helpless. And there's nothing you can do about your state. It will make you feel as if you're helpless. And there's nothing you can do about yourself. Someone told me one time, he said that I can't control my unhappiness. I'm just, I'm just sad. That, and that's how depressed people talk. It, someone says, I, I don't want to fake it. This is how I feel. Listen to me. You must understand something. Your feelings are not you. Oh my God. Did you hear me? The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. So my, my, my feelings are a choice. I can make a choice. See, when all that happens, see what the Bible says. And David encouraged himself in what? In the Lord. I want to ask you something. Did he feel like doing it? No. The first key to coming out of depression is taking responsibility for change. You know, um, Hilda was sharing her story some few minutes ago. And I'm shocked to hear that into six hours, her strength failed. I thought that she was having a fun fair all through. Because from the outside, all of you saw the jamboree. 
All of you saw the ease. But the person going to the battle, she could not see. All I, I mean, I, I thought it was a jamboree until I went in. And when I said hi, she said, hi. I could tell that, hey, wow. Because I was trying to have a conversation. They said, Pastor, talk to her. I said, no, 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 not this kind of person. This person needs to leave her to finish what she needs to do. We'll talk afterwards. The question is that, listen to me, forget the outside battle. Win the inner battle. And, and listen to me, when you think there's no more strength in yourself, remember the Lord is the strength of your life. When everyone fails, remember there's a rock that will never fail. The Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord. And I want to get practical here. Someone says, I'm depressed. How can I even get to encourage myself? One thing that will help you. When things happen to you, learn to ask yourself questions that encourages you, not discourages you. I'll give an example. I, I need my microphone. When things happen to people, what questions do they ask? Let's do this. When things happen to people who lose their job, people have a delay with your pro, a program, what question? Samora, tell me what question you ask. Yeah, what question? What, what, everybody ask themselves a question. Me, my primary question I used to ask myself was, why me? What do you ask yourself? How did I get, how did I get to this level? Uh -huh. How did I get here? That's good. Give another person, give another person to ask. Yeah. Just give, yeah, yeah, yeah. Give it to the, yeah, yeah. What, what do you ask yourself? Why did I fail? Why did I fail? That's a good question. Give the lady beside you. What do you ask yourself? Why me? Why me? Let me tell that question. Paul asks himself, why is God punishing me? Another question Paul asks yourself is that, what did I do wrong? What? What did I do to deserve this? Some of these questions are right, some of these questions are wrong. The way you know the right or wrong question is that every question that does not bring encouragement is a wrong question. Because your question determines your focus and direction. Questions, um, that's why the Bible says there's a way faith talks. There's a way faith talks. Give, give my sister the, the question. What do you ask yourself? What, what, do you ask, what question do you ask yourself when things happen? Yeah, tell me. Who did I offend? Uh huh. Uh, it, that, it's very good in English. In the Yoruba, it's very strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be, be, because it, it's a question that someone is doing me that something is wrong. Who did I offend? What did I do wrong? What happened? But the question is that if you, if you keep asking yourself, in fact, another question is that God, why are you punishing me? Who knows that question? God, why are you what? Punishing me. Question. Those questions will sap your faith and increase your doubts. That's what the Bible says. The righteousness of faith does not ask how it will happen. There are questions that faith does not ask. Because faith asking those questions will kill it. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. So the question is that, ah, who did I offend? Why is, he, why is he always me? Some of the questions are not even true because is he always you? So another question we ask is, God, why are you punishing me? Let me give you some better questions you can ask. What is a better question I can ask? When things happen, what, what can you ask? Chantel, tell me a better question you can ask when things happen to you. Yeah. What, what question can you ask? With all the praying and fasting and the word that I know, Exactly. How did this happen? Yeah. With all the praying and fasting, how did this happen? Those questions will sap your faith. Let me give a question I can ask. When something happens, what is God protecting me from? So, you had the breakup of this three-year relationship. And instead of, I to, instead of me to say, ah, God, why are you punishing me? I say to myself, what did God say in the future that's protecting me from? Which one will build faith? Which one will build doubt? What about if I ask myself this question? What is God teaching me through this process? The reason why is that the Bible says, and David encouraged himself in the Lord, which is great. But the question is that, how do I encourage?
encourage myself. I encourage myself by asking myself faith-filled questions. What is God protecting me from? What is God teaching me? Can I give another question? How is God going to turn this to a testimony? It, it's a question. So, I've lost 100 million deal. And I said, Lord, how are you going to turn this to a testimony? Because the question in himself has a strong element of faith. The question you ask yourself will determine the focus of your mind. And the reason why your mind is struggling is because you are asking yourself the wrong question. Did you notice David, when David got to the battle between Goliath and Israel? When his brother was like, David, why are you asking so many questions? What did David say? David answered with a faithful question. David said, is there not a reason that I'm here? Oh my God. What David was saying was that, don't you understand that I don't walk by chances. This is a divine arrangement. That I'm here for a time like this. When something happens to you, you look and say, what is God trying to bet out of me that made this happen? What is God? You know, you ask yourself, say, what is God trying to birth out of me? You know, sometimes you ask, why well, was I born in Nigeria? Wrong question. How was I born in Nigeria? Was I born in Nigeria? I was born for such a time as this. Why? Because there's something to change in the country. I love what, I, I love, I read a verse, an old time verse. It, it was, um, I think it was said by Joshua. I'm not sure. It was not Joshua. Um, by Nehemiah. When Tambalas and Tobiah were threatening him, Nehemiah said, they said, they told him to go and hide in the temple. He said, shall such a man as me flee? He says, shall such a man. So, so when there's challenges, I tell myself, shall such a man as me flee? I tell myself like David, because it's what I keep telling myself. What do you keep telling yourself? What, what do you keep telling yourself? What do you keep telling yourself? Shall such a man like me flee? So I want, to, I want to ask you a question. Can I be honest with you? Just because of the issues you have with dating, you say you're not married again, you're fleeing already. Just because of all the setback you have in business, you don't want to go hard in business again, you're fleeing already. Shall such a man as me flee? Just because of the issues in ministry, you are fleeing. Hey, we signed this cell, we didn't do it. Hey, shall such a man as me flee? Hey, the Bible says the righteous are as bold as lion. Do you know what the Bible says? Book of Proverbs. He said the it says it says the lion is the king of the jungle, and what turneth not aside for any. So when something happens to you, ask yourself: Is this developing my capacity? Because the question you ask yourself will determine your focus and what your direction. You know, our church is going through innovation, and we're here using it. You know, you know what I'm happy about. Because you are not here for fancy air conditioned church, you are here for the word of God. Someone say, But there are churches where you can park. I say, Because we, we don't even offer parking like that, but we offer prayer and the word of God. So people sweat, but they know what they are coming for. I'm grateful for fortune to test your commitment. Oh, someone say, Hallelujah! Someone say, Hallelujah! So the question today is this, and this is a question to you. When you have tough times, what questions will you be asking yourself? Because the questions you ask yourself will begin to help you to get encouraged or what? Discouraged. Someone say hallelujah. So how do you step out of, of depression? How do you step out of depression? Um, give the microphone to Yeli. Yeli, you had this project that you thought you complete in one year. Which is a building project, and I think it's taking you about two years. How many years now? Two, two and a half, sir. Two and a half years. And you felt frustrated, you felt useless, you felt angry. People that your your buyers have been upset with you, they've almost beaten you up at some point. You know, that's an energy on my part, you know. But how did you feel? How did you handle all of this process? Um, you just you move you move on. You move on. You know, uh, you know, <laughs> you know, sometimes I could be a ton in this flesh. So I told him because I particularly warned him. We had a strategy so like this might not go well. And when I brought it up again, he said, Pastor Bologi, if I didn't do it, I will not learn. And when he said that, that was the right lesson. 
And that's why I said to you, what question do you ask yourself? So let me tell you something. I know the guy broke up your heart, but question, if he didn't break your heart, you will not learn that how Yoruba demons are. But now you can do a blog, you can write a book, you can do something. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something, eh? Success is a function of experience. Yes or no? Yes or no? Experience is a function of what? Experience is a function of what? Bad decisions. You didn't know that. Because how do you get experience? It's not from just good decisions. It's a function of what? Both good and bad decisions. So for you to get an experience, you must have done both, gone on good and bad decisions. So when you say someone is very experienced, he has, had mil- he has made what? Good decisions and what? Bad decisions. I'm an experienced pastor. Meaning I've made what? Bad decisions and what? Good decisions. Praise God. So how do you come out of depression? You take, you, you, you take responsibility. So what did you responsibility for? Of what you feel and what you think. That's what you do. What, what do you think responsibility? So how did you responsibility? You take responsibility for what you think and what you feel. Yeah. How do you take responsibility? You take responsibility for what you think and what you what? Feel. You take responsibility for what you think and what you what? Feel. So tell me some bad thoughts that come that depresses you. Anybody from the choir? I know the choir, I know that you guys are even not so you. Give it a light day. Yeah. Yeah. So what thoughts makes you depressed sometimes? That, that It doesn't make you depressed. I know you're spiritual, you cast it out. But what thought comes here? Yeah. So sometimes when you're in peace. What thought comes here? Yeah. Okay. If you cannot answer, like pass it. You're not good enough. You're not good enough. They, exactly. Others. So, not thought you. that you're not good enough. So the question is that, when that thought comes, what do you want to replace with it? You replace it by saying that I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. The reason why is ever look up here. Let me let me give you a trick. This is a trick, a spiritual trick. Thought goes stronger when you replay it in your mind. So when the thought comes, I'm not good enough. If you let it go, that's all. But by the time you begin to replay it, I'm not good enough. It begins to go stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. Yeah, give it, give it to her. Yeah. All of you always say Jesus when you have the microphone. That's great. Yeah. What thoughts? What thought comes? Yeah. Well, the fear of failure. Yeah. What? What? In a thought, what does it come? I, I know that's the fear, but in a thought, okay, um, you will fail at this. Yes, I will not make it through. This. You will not make it through. So the question is that. So there's those thought that brings suppression. Oh, you will not make it through. It's a thought. You are arrested. So how do you take control? Because remember, by taking control of how you think and how you feel, essentially by what you say. Because life and death are in the power of the tongue. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. I love what someone said as we, you know, we're, we're, we're putting this together. And it says, outcome is always your response to whatever happens. It's, it's, a, it's a mathematical equation. Response plus what? Event equals what? Outcome. Just put in your note like that. Response R plus what? E equals what? O. R plus E equals O. So the event you are not able to change. But your response can change your outcome. So some things happen to you that you cannot change. But what will be your response? Your response can change your outcome. So, for example, for example, you lost in your business, you made a loss last year. That's an event. That's something happened. But what's your response? Your response can be like, I'm a failure. Then the outcome is that we'll pack and go home. But your response can be like, oh, we learned a lot. And there are new things we can do. Then our outcome is that we have a profitable year. So an event can be like an event can be like your your husband left the house, but 
your response can be like, me too, I will leave the house. And the outcome can be a divorce. But your, you can, your response can change your outcome. What's your response? Will it be prayer? Will you respond? And this is why we're people of faith. Are we going to bring the faith to the table? Are we going to bring the faith? Are we going, oh my God, are we going to bring the faith or are we going to bring doubt? Are we going to bring the faith and belief or are we going to bring unbelief and fear? What are we going to bring to the table? You lost the relationship you were in for five years and your response is, I will never marry again. Come on. Are we going to bring the faith and say, he that's begun the good thing will finish it. I lost some money in business. Are you going to bring the faith and say that God will turn it around for my good. Are you going to bring the faith? Praise God. So two things today as we close. Number one, maybe I can add one more. You need to determine, don't, why is it determined, why is it important to accept responsibility? Don't act from a place of depression. You will do things that will confirm that things are negative. Don't. Change that state first. Then change your focus by changing your questions. Then the third thing that, the third thing that David did, First Samuel chapter, chapter 30, verse 5. The Bible says, And David went to Abieta. Amen. No koshe there. I think that's two verses. Maybe that's about verse 7. You're right. The Bible says, and David said to Abiata the priest, Amalek's son, I pray thee, bring me the ephod. And Abiata brought the ephod. Are you here today? When you're depressed, look for people that can bring you strength. I know that some of you are mighty ego. You like to do it by yourself. But that's not what life is. Look for people that can be. He went to Abiata. Question, where is your Abiata? Who is your better that can bring you strength from the word of God? David realized something. And David wrote the Psalms. He remembered something. That when things are tough. Hear my cry, O Lord. Attend unto my prayers. From the ends of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed. Lord Jesus, lead me to the rock that is higher than I that is higher than I when my heart is overwhelmed Lord Jesus lead me to the rock that is higher than I that is higher sometimes nobody can feel it and you need to go back to your creator on your knees and say my heart is overwhelmed you are the rock that is higher than I you know those prayers sometimes you don't even have the words I don't know if you know those kind of prayers those prayers where you say father and it's just tears that come now and the good thing is that the Bible says we don't have an high priest that cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities because he was in every way tempted as we were. So as those tears dropped, Jesus Christ said, I felt that. I, I felt that. I, I felt the pain. I, I felt that. I felt that. I felt that. I felt that. And sometimes you're just there and you're saying nothing. And in your nothing, you're saying so much. Oh my God. Oh my God. In your nothing, you are saying so much. You are saying so much because it seems as if natural strength has failed. It seems as if there's no power in the flesh. And lead me to the rock that is higher than I. I don't know what to do about this company anymore. I've tried everything. Look at all the truth. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is higher than I. You know the problem? Let your depression drive you to prayer, not social media. Stop. Listen, let your depression drive you to prayer, not social media. We know the place of our strength. Our strength is not where people are talking. Our strength is in a secret place. He said, they that wait upon the Lord shall be. He said, they that wait upon 
from the Lord. They shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run. Hey, hey, hey. I may not know the governor, but I know God. He says, everyone that appears in Zion shall, 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 what? shall mount up strength. He says, everyone that appears in Zion shall appear. Maybe the problem is the fact that your prayer life is under attack. That's why depression is sinking. Maybe it's time to get your prayer life back. And sometimes when you don't have words to say, you have songs to sing. Ah, hata. Sometimes when there's no word to say, we have songs to sing. We have psalms to say. Oh, this contract i don't know why it's delaying this this child issue come come mb3 come sometimes you're wondering lord but i've been praying about this i've seen you've done some things but it's not completed i say father finish it lord lord you have started it finish it That disappoints me one day. One day. Hey. He never disappoints me. me one day. Oh, 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 oh. Praise God sometimes what your words cannot say your song will say it listen everybody it's time to close the service come my brother no no me you come sometimes the trouble that satan used to tie you makes what god used to pull you What, what Satan used to, what Satan, he, he thought he bound you with this. He thought he bound you with this. God uses it to put. It's not as if God caused the problem, but the problem invites him. The problem, the problem becomes what he uses to get your attention. So much so that you can say, what the, how did you become prayerful? It was when I went through this crisis, I became prayerful. What the enemy thought for evil, God did for good. The question is to let God and let go. He's to let go and let God. And say, God, do what you want to do. Do it how you want to do it. I'm not going to break down. I'm going to travel. I'm going to press in. I'm going to... Hey, go Funke, you have to press in. Shade, you have to press in. Antonia, you have to press in. Chinedo, you have to press in. Chuma, you have to press in. Clinton is for you today. The Lord is reaching out for you. He's lifting you out of the pit of despondency. This is your service. And Father, everyone here can stand. Please stand on your feet. 
Thank you once again. We give you praise. I pray for everyone that is going through a depression. That this morning they are coming out of it. By the power of your spirit. What should destroy them makes them prayerful rather. What should destroy them become a testimony. Leads to encounters of the spirit. We give you praise. In Jesus name we pray. Oh, go ahead and shout a big hallelujah. Hallelujah.